Hey everyone, Shark here, and I want to talk to you about something you might be sleeping on. Something that you might not have realized is a nice way to get some extra experience, mora, artifact leveling experience, character ascension materials, and even free resin and primo gems. So let's get into it. And we are talking about the Serena Teapot. So in this video, we'll go over how to unlock the Serena Teapot and how to get all the goodies for free. You may not have known too much about the Serena Teapot or just thought it was Genshin's version of The Sims, but it's actually pretty useful. So I'm going to cover how to unlock the Serena Teapot as well as how to develop it the most efficient way so that you'll have an additional way to get extra resources and resin daily and weekly. So first things first, how do we unlock the Serena Teapot? Well, it's pretty simple. You need to be at least Adventure Rank 35, and to complete the Archon Quest in Leeway, Chapter 1, Act 3, A New Star Approaches. Now, I won't spoil any of the story, but this is the last quest in the Leeway Archon story, so if you are doing the Inazuma Archon Quest, you've already done this. Now, once you've completed this quest and are AR35 or above, simply go to Madam Ping in Leeway. When you talk to Madam Ping, a new quest called A Teapot to Call Home will be available from her. Madam Ping talks about her own interdimensional teapot and she says that she will gift one to you if you help her out. Being the good travelers we are, of course we're going to help this old adeptus lady. She'll also introduce you to Yanfei and you'll get to see a little bit about her character. Simply follow the prompts for the quest to complete it. It does take a little while, but it will be worth it. Once you complete this quest, you will be given a Serena teapot of your own. This is a physical item in your inventory that you can place down anywhere in the world and access your very own Serena teapot. Accessing the teapot will transport you into your own personal domain that you can decorate any way you like. Currently, there are four different realms for the Serena teapot, but only three are accessible from the beginning. The first is the floating abode, which is like an adeptal realm with a bunch of floating islands. Next is Emerald Peak, which is a mountainous area very similar to the ones in Liyue. And then there's the Cool Isle, which is an area that looks kind of like summer islands around Mondstadt. Now the fourth area you have to unlock from the Sakura Tree in Inazuma, and that will give you an Inazuma themed teapot area. So the Inazuma themed area is not available from the start, and it does take a while to get, but it doesn't matter because you can actually switch between these realm styles at will. And in fact, that's where the first part of our strategy begins. You see, every realm in the Serena teapot exists independently of the other ones meaning that any furnishings that you craft and place is going to be saved in the that realm and it will not be transferred to another one. You'll still have the items that you crafted of course, but they won't be placed anywhere in the new realm if you decide to switch. So here's the first tip to max out your teapot quickly. And it's to simply pick an area that you don't want to decorate and make it look very pretty. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive for a housing system, but the way to get the most out of the teapot is to simply craft everything you can and place all types of random furnishings down to level up your teapot as quickly as possible. So for the first realm, you're not concerned with looks, you're just concerned about leveling up your teapot as quickly as you can. For this reason, it's good to pick a realm that you don't want to decorate to be the most beautiful scenic area ever, but just one that you're okay with kind of throwing a bunch of random stuff in. Think of this first realm that you're building as just sort of a storage closet. It's going to have a bunch of random junk in it, but that's totally okay. You see, all the realms are separate, but they all share the highest amount of adeptal energy to get you the best resources. We'll go over exactly what adeptal energy is and how to max it out in just a little bit, but just realize it is completely fine and in fact encouraged to have one realm that has just a bunch of random things in it so that you can have the most amount of adeptal energy. Once you've chosen the realm that you're okay with being your random furnishing storage closet, it's time to go inside. Once inside, you'll meet our teapot spirit who's a bird in its own little teapot named Tubby. Tubby is the NPC that you'll be interacting with and also the NPC that you'll be buying things like transient resin, Mora, Hero's Wit, artifact leveling experience, and a lot more stuff from. But in order to do that, you must first increase your trust rank. You can think of the trust rank as Tubby's level, and to increase the trust rank, you have to craft new furnishings for the very first time. Achieving a higher trust rank with Tubby will get you access to more items in the Realm Depot, the store of the Serena Teapot, and eventually, as you achieve higher trust ranks, you'll be able to unlock other realms as well. So even though you're locked into one realm at the start, you'll eventually be able to go to all three or all four once you unlock the realm in Inazuma. So you want to craft furnishings for the first time to increase this trust rank. Well, 
how do you craft furniture? It's actually pretty simple. There's a bunch of different blueprints available right from the start, but you can acquire more through special quests, event quests, remarkable chests, which are the green chests that you'll find on Surumi Island, the foggy island of Inazuma, as well as scattered throughout Sumeru. You can also use realm coins to buy blueprints from the realm depot, and you do get blueprints from leveling up your trust rank as well. Once you have the blueprint, simply go to your inventory, click on it to learn it, and then you'll be able to craft. In order to craft these furnishings, you have to go into your Serena teapot, talk to Tubby, and then go into the crafting section. In order to craft these, you'll need to gather some materials. They can be collected from trees and plants, and then things like fabric and dye can only be crafted by interacting with Tubby and crafting inside the Serena teapot itself. So some things you need to craft in order to craft. One thing to take note of is that some dye ingredients can be swapped out in the creation menu. For example, you can use either Sunsetias or Valberries or Carrots to create red dye. Another thing to note is you can do something similar for lumber where you exchange ore and other materials for lumber. But lumber is actually an infinite resource so you may not want to do this. And what I mean by infinite resource is that every time you attack a tree that can produce wood, you can get up to three pieces of lumber. And once you've collected lumber from 10 trees, the first one that you hit will reset, meaning that you can go collect it again. So for example, you can hit one tree a few times, collect three lumber, go to another tree, hit it a few times, collect three more lumber, then go to the third tree, hit it a few times, collect more lumber, then go to trees number 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then once you've collected the lumber from tree number 10, you can go back to the very first tree you started with and you'll be able to collect the lumber all over again. Now once you've crafted furnishings, you can place them in your teapot. Some furnishings are meant for outdoors and can only be placed outside, where some furnishings can only be placed indoors. Both the indoor and outdoor realms of your teapot have what are called a load limit. This is simply the amount of furnishings that you can place in either the inside interior home of your teapot or the outside area before you can't place any more. You don't ever get to see the numerical value of the load, but it's instead indicated by some colors. If the load is green, it means you can place quite a bit more. If it's yellow, it means you're getting to a point where you can't place any more. And if the load is red, it means you can't place any more items. Now here's a big tip for your teapot efficiency. Earlier I mentioned that you want a high amount of adeptal energy. But now we also have to consider load, and a lot of furnishings that give you high amounts of adeptal energy also have a very high load. So we want something that gives us a good amount of adeptal energy, but has a very low load so we can place a lot of them. And there just so happens to be a nice furnishing you can craft called the Pine Folding Screen Billowing Sails. This is a 4 star purple furnishing item that you can place indoors and it takes up almost no load. You can stack them back to back and it gives you a good amount of adeptal energy. So simply craft a lot of these and put them in your teapot. Now you'll obviously need a lot of pine lumber for this and a great place to farm is Wu Wang Hill. Simply go to the area on screen now and use the trick that I showed you earlier to farm an infinite amount of lumber. Now we've talked about this a little bit before, but now it's time to go over adeptal energy. Adeptal energy is very simply just a measurement of how many furnishings have been placed in your realm. If you want to increase your adeptal energy, simply place more furnishings. And you want to increase your adeptal energy because you'll get more realm coins. And realm coins are what you use to buy everything in the Serena teapot. This not only includes blueprints for more furnishings. You can straight up just buy certain furnishings like plants as well, but it also includes things like transient resin, mora, enhanced manure, hero's wit, artifact leveling items, and regional specialties for character ascension. Now I know this is a lot of information, but it's a good foundation for how to build and develop your teapot the best and most efficient way possible. Once we go over the best way to develop your teapot, then we'll talk about the store items and which items are great and which ones are traps that you definitely want to avoid. So when you're starting out, you want to increase your adeptal energy and your trust rank as soon as possible. The best way to do this is to craft a bunch of different furnishings one time each, and then craft and place a lot of high adeptal energy, low load furnishings like the pine folding screen, billowing sails. Remember, you won't get trust rank experience for crafting this pine folding screen multiple times. You'll only get it once, so it's a good idea to craft new furnishings so that you can increase your trust rank. The best way to do this is to buy an item in the shop called Vial of Adeptal Speed. As you can see, crafting in the teapot takes much longer than crafting anywhere else in the game. 
What takes minutes at the blacksmith literally takes hours in the teapot, anywhere from 12 to 16 hours depending on the grade of item you're crafting. But the vial of adeptal speed will allow you to instantly craft an item, skipping the wait entirely. So buy your 5 vials of adeptal speed per day and use them to craft 4 star purple furnishings. The reason you want to use them on the purple furnishings is because they give you the most trust rank experience. So if I was brand new, what I would do would be to buy my five vials of adeptal speed, craft as many of the four star furnishings as I could, then when I ran out of those, I would move on to the three star furnishings, and then when I ran out of those, I would move on to the two star furnishings, or the green furnishings. And then when I didn't have anything new to craft to increase my trust rank, I would then start crafting a bunch of the folding pine screens to increase my adeptal energy. I'd place all the furnishing downs wherever kind of haphazardlessly because again we're just trying to get the trust rank up and the adeptal energy as high as we can. And once we've got our trust rank up pretty high and our adeptal energy at maximum we can then move on to another realm and make it nice and pretty. But again, this first realm is just a storage closet. Throw in anything and everything you can just to get your adeptal energy to the maximum. Once you're at the maximum adeptal energy, which is fit for a king, you'll be able to earn 30 realm coins per hour. Now let's talk about the realm depot and which items are good and which items you definitely want to avoid. The first one that can only be purchased once per week is the transient resin. Using this item will immediately give you 60 resin, but there's a bit of a caveat, and that is that this is a temporary item that expires on the upcoming Monday. So if you got this on a Monday, you would have up until the end of Sunday before the server reset on Monday to use it before it would expire. But if you bought this on a Sunday, you'd only have that day to use it or it would expire the next day which would be a Monday on the server reset. So this is a great item to get. 60 free resin will take it, but make sure you use it either immediately or you have a day planned to use it so it doesn't go to waste. The next items on the list are all really good. There's Mora, Hero's Wit, and Enhancement Ores. Now while Tubby Crypto farms realm coins, you get to reap the benefits because you can get 20 Hero's Wits per week, which is the equivalent of about four ley lines worth of experience books, all while doing nothing, so it's pretty cool. Vials of a Adeptal Speed are also great to buy as they can help you create more furnishings and max out that trust rank. Every time you increase your trust rank, you get some primo gems as well as getting some teapot related rewards. After that, you can purchase the artifact leveling items, which are the Sanctified Unction and Sanctified Essence. These items can be used to help level your artifacts. The blue ones give the exact same experience as blue artifacts and the purple ones give the exact same experience as purple artifacts. Now as far as what not to buy, definitely do not buy the Wanderer's Advice. These are the green character books and the amount of experience they give you for the amount of realm coins they cost is just abysmal. You're better off saving for a little bit more and getting the Hero's Wit instead. Another thing I would not advise getting is the fabric. This is pretty easy to acquire, it's easy to craft, the items are pretty plentiful so I definitely save your realm coins and use them on other things instead. Now, I I feel like I've thrown a lot of information at you and I don't want this video to go on too long. We've covered how to get the teapot, the development systems of the adeptal energy and trust ranks, several strategies to develop your teapot in order to get the resources from the realm depot the fastest, as well as which items to avoid in the shop. That's a really solid foundation, but there is a lot more to cover, and I wanted you to have this foundation before I threw too much information at you and just completely overloaded you. But if you want to know more information, specifically how to use the teapot for gardening for character ascension materials, creating special furniture sets for primo gems, increasing character friendship, and adding pets to your teapot, then let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a follow-up video. And while you're here, don't forget to like and sub. Doing so helps this shark swim through the YouTube algorithm and reach a much bigger ocean. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much, everyone. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Continue to stay jolly awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.